there we go so what do you guys know about binary what is binary it's, a, it's programming with ones and zeros it's programming with ones and zeros what else how it's like the language of the computer yes it is the only thing that computers actually understand is a one or a zero so uh, computers all break down everything on a computer breaks down to a one or zero and you have stuff um, I think they're called transistors but you basically have um, and you can Google and YouTube this for a lot better and more thorough explanation but basically everything on a transistor everything in a microchip is basically a yes or a no yes or a no and so you basically have such small transistors that one electron will go to the yes or to the no and that turns the gate that turns the switch yes or no and then you have a combination of yes no yes no and if these two are both yes then you have this thing that says yes or if this one and that one this is yes and this is no then overall this is no so this is basically what a microchip is it's just a bunch of yes no gates that allow an electron through and the more of those gates you have the faster your computer can run so that's the gist of how a computer works is literally one electron per one of these going through yes no and my dad programming in the 80s he would actually for he was doing the code to add numbers together you would actually have to send an electron through and then wait a couple milliseconds for everything to equalize out to a yes or to a no because when an electron goes through it, it interferes with it a little bit, if I remember correctly how he was explaining it. But you would basically see in the yes part or the no part, you would see and then it would even out as opposed to nothing here. And it was just, it was you had to wait a few milliseconds to get the yes or no. Or it was like when it actually went through. And that was actually coding on punch cards. You would actually poke holes in a piece of paper, put it into a machine, and that's how you programmed a computer. I wasn't typing. Um, did, I was just about to say, yeah, has anyone seen Hidden Figures? Um, that's the movie with the, uh, the NASA astronauts. The, the term computers was never for a machine it was for people who would do computations and there are these three black women who worked for oh, NASA I saw hmm? I saw that. yeah the, uh, the three women who worked for NASA in the 50s were like the best computers ever they were so good at it and they were doing all this trajectory and they were checking the math and it's it's actually really really good I highly recommend it um, all right so binaries ones and zeros one two three four five six seven eight most things are in eight bits, um, eight bit graphics, 16 bit graphics, 32 bit computer, 64 bit. Um, that's basically how much information is stored in one byte. Uh, we're gonna focus on eight bits because that's the most common, especially when you get into computer networking, you use eight bits for everything. Um, but basically what this, um, comes down to is powers of two, right? What's two to the second power? Four, what's two to the eight, uh, seventh power? So you got two to the one is two, and two to the two is four, then eight, six. Is it 168? 16. No, it should be two, two to the eight is 256, so 128 probably, I think. 128. All right. So um, with these eight numbers, I can represent any number from zero to 255. How does that work, Mr. Stolter? Great question. Um, so in decimal, we use decimal, right? We use base 10 numbering system. So we have um, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Once we get to nine, we then put a zero here and we start up here with a zero. Then we go one, two. So that's how we get 10, 
110. Once we get, once we fill this up with zero to nine, we then go to the next place and we start with zero to nine. Does that make sense? Same thing with binary, but instead of having 10 numbers, you have two. You have zero and one. So if we have zero, one, then we're gonna start with zero to one and then zero to one. So what does yes and one mean? Yes is one, zero is no. So we only have two numbers, which is why it's called binary. Right? One, zero, two options. Bi is the pref prefix or prefix for two. So zero, one. And is everyone tracking with me so far? Right? Yes? Okay. So the next part of binary is what each place represents. So if we have... 1,246, this number represents the what? This goes back to like first grade. This is the ones, the tens, the hundreds, and the thousands. Do you guys see a pattern here? Right, You're increasing by a power of what each time? Power of 10 each time. So this is actually 10 to the zero power, because anything to the zero power is what? One. One. This is 10 to the 1, this is 10 to the 2, this is 10 to the 3rd. Tracking with me? We're going to do the same thing with binary when we have 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. But instead of 10, this is going to be the 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 to the 1, or 2 to the 2, 2 to the 3, and 2 to the 4. Tracking with me? Bradley, you got me? Yay, nay. Okay. So, what happens? So then we just do six times 10 to the zero, right? So if we're doing this, to add this together, we would do one times 10 to the third, which equals how much? 1,000. And then we would do 2 times 10 to the 2, which is how much? 200. Then we would do 4 times 10 to the 1, which equals 40. And then we do 6 times 10 to the 0, which equals 6, which gives us 1, 2, 4, 6. So that, that's how decimal works, right? We grew up and we're so used to this, we don't think of it this way anymore. And they also don't do power of tens in first grade, which I'm grateful for. But with binary, it's the exact same thing, except in, instead of using zero to nine, we're using zero and one. So if we have zero, we're gonna go, technically when you start from, you work your way this way with these numbers. So it's one times two to the four, which equals what? This is one, two, four, eight, 16. So 16. So then we're going to have 16. Then we have zero times two to the three, which is how much? Zero. One times two to the fourth, oh, I'm sorry, two to the two, which equals four. One times two to the one equals two. And zero times two to the zero is what? Zero. So, to this number equals 22, so 22 in binary is 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 6, 7, 8. Technically, you'd add those three. Do you guys understand how binary works? Sort of. Sort of? No? What's your question, Bradley? Um, so, how do you get the number, so you put in squares? So it's just in binary we have eight. There's eight in an eight bit. You just have um, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You just have eight numbers, right? Mm -hmm. Just like if we were doing, if I said an eight bit decimal number, and we wanted to write eight thousand two hundred forty-two, eight thousand two hundred forty-two. I really like that two four. Um, this is not eight numbers, so we would add zero zero zero. 
Zero. Is this the same number as eight two four two? Yeah. Yeah, it's just we we're cushioning it with these extra digits. But I mean, where do you put the squares and the two? Is it like? Well, I'm I'm working towards that. So with decimal numbers, right? This stands for ten to the zero. This is the tens place. Ten is what? Ten to the first power. This is the hundreds place. This is ten squared. Okay. This is the thousands place, which is ten to the three. So I'm just doing that with these. This is the two to the zero power. Okay. This is two to the one, two to the two, two to the three, two to the four, two to the five, two to the six, and two to the seven. So with these, eight, with eight ones and zeros, I can I can write any number from zero to two fifty five. And this is why in IP addresses, the maximum you can have any number zero to two fifty five dot zero to two fifty five dot zero to two fifty five dot zero to two fifty five. For an IP address, you won't see a number greater than two hundred. You won't see a number that's two hundred fifty six or higher, because it's only eight num eight. It's a there's only eight numbers, eight binary, it, uh, eight of those per octet, which is why it's called an octet, it's because there's eight digits. I'm throwing some networking stuff in there that you guys don't have to pay attention to. It's just something you learn in my networking class. You should take it. Shameless plug. Um, okay, so now that you guys kind of understand binary, I need one more step in order for you guys to understand how Python takes what I type in translates it to binary, and then binary back to something I understand. So, let me diagram this out real quick. So would like one zero equal two? Yeah. Yes. Uh, so it's actually, to count up in binary zero, is zero, 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 zero. one, uh, one zero one 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 zero zero one one zero. I think. But if you notice, the cool thing is that if this number is, if the last number is a zero, it's an even number. So I, just because I saw this meme of the neuron ten types of people in the year, so I was going to understand binary. <laughs> and I was like, what? Yeah, now I get it. It's one zero. <laughs> um. All right. So this is. Let's say this is me. Typing at my computer, Python, yeah. yeah. And then oh, this yeah. is going into my computer. This is the CPU. Ooh. And then Ooh. this is coming back to my screen displaying information. So I have explained. Oh, wait, hang on. You can do it. To display back to me. I need to scoot myself over here. So I've explained how Python takes information and allows the CPU to understand it, right? But how do I take a word and convert that to binary? Well, you don't. You convert it to ASCII, which I can't remember what it stands for. A-S-C-I-I, -I, which is every button on your keyboard has a number um, associated with it. Now if you guys have your books, on um, page 577 is an ASCII chart and it tells you everything that's on the keyboard from like zero, I think it's zero to 255, yeah. Yeah, I'd, yeah you'll need it. Yeah, you guys will need it today. There's some exercises we're gonna work on at the end of the day. So yeah, Appendix C. So if you guys look at it, you'll see. Uh, so Micah, what's capital A? Actually, so let's let's do let's do the print function because we're that's you guys are gonna have to get used Isn't to that. Is it just print parentheses quote whatever you want? Please. Correct. But I want to know the ASCII of print. So what's lowercase p? It's capital B. I already know it is lowercase. Yeah, you know, it's lowercase. Yeah. What's the number, Micah? 113. 113. Who else has their book? I do. Kayla, can you give me R? 
577, what? Appendix C. Lowercase letter? Yeah, everything's lowercase. What's that one? One four. One four. Oh, that's easy. Right. What's I? Wait, P is actually one twelve. P is one twelve. I is Kayla. One o five. Bradley. What's N? N is uh, one o four. One o. No, N should not be one o four. Wait, oh, seventy. What? N. One ten. One ten. And what's T? Um, Maddie. 116. So now you guys see all. The, so what Python does is it takes this from me. I type in print. These letters get converted into numbers. These numbers then get converted into binary. I don't know. That's just what people said. Yeah, lowercase and not uppercase. So for example. 112 in binary would be what? Does anyone want to venture to take a guess? Or just Let's do it together. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This uh, is 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. The easiest way to do this, right, is 112 greater or less than 128. Less than. So we're going to put a zero. Is 112 greater or less than 64? Greater. Greater. So we're going to put a one, and then you do 112 minus 64, which is, uh, that's 10, 8, 48. Right, yeah, 48. Is 48 greater or less than 32? Minus 32 which is 16, right? Yeah. Is 16 greater or less than 16? Equal, equal to. Equal. So if we get equal to, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, we're done. Wait, what? What's equal to? 16 is equal to 16. Wait, where's 16? Oh, 16. Right, so when we type in print, what the computer's doing is it's taking P, knows that it has the number evaluated 112, 112 gets translated into binary. The computer understands like, oh, okay, we have a P. What's the next thing? We're getting an R, we're getting an I, we're getting a T. So we're getting a string of numbers that the computer knows, oh, I'm supposed to print this information because Python's telling me to. I'm supposed to display it. Bradley. You, you need to understand how a computer works. I'm not testing you on this. Right, like, but do but we're coding, we're gonna need to like understand it, but we're not gonna need to like know it to be able to like correct. The only thing you will absolutely need to know is these values. You don't have to memorize them, you just have to know where to find them because in your video game, if you want your character to move with W A S D, you need to type in the you'll need to know. You can't just type in W, you have to type oh, in the number. Put like whatever W is, 119. Yeah. Okay. You can or if you want to use your But that's a lot. Yeah, so like, just as long as you understand ASCII is the number value associated with every thing on my keyboard, and the computer takes what I type in, translates to ASCII, translates it to binary, computer does it, I, this, and then I get the information. But I love this sort of stuff, and I just think the more you know about this, the more like computing and networking and how computers work and why things are the way they are, it's so much fun. I love my networking class because I can actually like go into detail on that. I can't really in this class, but anyway. Brad. Is this your first year teaching this? No, this is my sixth semester, I think, teaching okay. this. Have Fifth you time. ever had anybody copy a code from another game? Uh, yes. Seriously? Yep. Why? Um, yeah, what game was it, specifically? It's like it was just a tutorial online of how to do something simple, and that was their final, and they turned it in. They did. I'm not gonna go into that, but I'll let, I'll tell you if you try if you do that, I will know you will fail. So just don't cheat. My my guideline is basically if you're afraid to show me where you got your work, you haven't done enough to it. But if you go, Mr. Stolter, this is this is my game. Voila. 
Look how awesome it is. It's a stargazing game. It takes about 12 hours to complete and it very, and doesn't change too much. Um, that's my game. This is where I started from. This is the website that told me how to do this, that, that. I've now added these six things to create my game. What do you think? But if you go, oh, uh, this, this is my game. And uh, uh, well, where'd you, you built that? Well, yeah, I mean, I had a little help with, the, with, with, with this tutorial. Oh, can I see it? Uh, sure. Like if you're that like, oh my gosh, he's gonna see and he's gonna notice, then you didn't do enough work and it's basically cheating. Yes, Maddie. Can you take a pre-existing game idea and write it in your own code? Yeah, so if you like wanna, if you wanna code Pac-Man, go right ahead or Snake or something like that, it's 100% fine. Um, just don't copy and paste the code because you can, I think on Python, you can import Minecraft and then play Minecraft. Yes. yes. Like you I, can't I, turn I, in Minecraft to me. <laughs> Period, sorry. Um, all right, so any questions? What time is it? All right, 10, 10, we started about a half hour ago. All right, let me just double check.